All right, and so for our last lecture uh, of this chapter, we're gonna talk about nucleophilic aromatic substitutions and then uh, kind of similar reaction, but not quite uh, the elimination addition reactions, okay? Um, so nucleophilic aromatic substitutions are going to happen when benzene is being attacked by a nucleophile. So before we always had benzene or some benzene derivative reacting with an electrophile. These are going to be now nucleophiles. So something like, for example, the hydroxide ion. And what's gonna happen is you're going to have the nucleophile attacking the benzene ring. And in particular at the base of a good leaving group, which is gonna be a halogen. And it's going to be substituting out, right? So again, just picking it that this reaction apart, nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction, will be substituting itself for that leaving group. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's start. There's, there's actually some strict conditions that have to be met for a compound to actually undergo, be eligible for a nucleophilic aromatic substitution. So first of all, sort of the exact opposite of with the electrophilic aromatic substitutions, for the nucleophilic aromatic substitutions, the benzene ring must possess a strong electron withdrawing group. Right, so those are what we call deactivators for the electrophilic aromatic substitution. They're going to be activators for nucleophilic aromatic substitution. And so let's just draw one example here. Right, well, in these reactions now, you're going to have some nucleophile that wants to attack this ring. And so having an electron withdrawing group, right? So let's just draw one of the resonance structures for these electron withdrawing groups would be something like this, which would in turn leave a positive charge bouncing around that ring, right? So in the same way that these electron withdrawing groups deactivated uh, rings towards electrophilic aromatic substitution, it's going to activate them for a nucleophilic aromatic substitution, right? By, with, by withdrawing electron from electrons from the ring, it makes it that much easier for a nucleophile to come and attack. Okay, so that's the first requirement for these uh, nucleophilic aromatic substitution reactions. The ring also must possess a good leaving group. So hydrogen isn't gonna cut it as a leaving group. You need something that's gonna be nice and stable all by itself, like a halogen, which can pop off as a halide ion. And lastly, the leaving group must be ortho or para to the withdrawing group. Okay, so it's not gonna work if it's in the meta position. Um, so here's an example where my leaving group, this, this meets criteria one and two. I got my strong electron withdrawer. I got a good leaving group, but unfortunately it is in the meta position. So there's not going to be any reaction that's observed. Okay. We'll see it's because it goes through this intermediate, which is similar to the sigma intermediate, uh, the sigma complex, but is now a Meisenheimer complex. It's got its own little special name and we'll see it's, it's similar, but slightly different. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do one of these reaction mechanisms here. Okay, so the first thing that's happened is, is a nucleophilic attack, but now this time the nucleophilic species isn't the ring. The ring is the electrophile. So my nucleophile is going to go and attack my electrophilic species. Notice that carbon can't have more than four bonds. So that's gonna have to break one of those pi bonds. Okay, it's attacking the base of that leaving group, right? Um, this is going to create, this is again, well, this is again what's called the Meisenheimer complex, where if we sort of follow our electron pushing arrows from the first step, that leaves this lone pair, whoops, this lone pair of electrons that's gonna now be stabilized around our ring. Remember in our electrophilic aromatic substitution complexes, we had this sigma intermediate, sigma complex intermediate, where you had a positive charge that was being stabilized throughout the ring. Now we're going to have a situation where we have this negative charge that's being stabilized throughout the ring. That's the Meisenheimer complex. 
Okay. And then finally, we have this last step here where, you know, the most important one here is, I guess, all these arrows are going to be how we restore the aromaticity to the ring, right? We need that nice aromatic ring at the end. And then also importantly, we have the loss of our leading group. Okay, so that's how we have our nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction. We put this nucleophile in place of our halogen leaving group. Okay. Um, in the case of phenol, phenol is actually uh, a pretty good acid because this ion's resonance stabilized. So not only would you need to treat it with your strong base, but then you would also need to follow it up with some source of protons to reprotonate that phenol group. Um, so those are nucleophilic aromatic substitutions. Again, they have to meet those three criteria. I'll say one more thing real quick, which is another good example of a good nucleophile that gets used in these reactions a lot. would be something like sodium amide, right? Where I have this amide ion here, which is a really good nucleophile as well. So that could be used in its place, okay? Um, an alkoxide ion could also be used, right? Something that's just a really strong nucleophile. Okay, um, so if notice that here, I do not have that first requirement. I don't have any sort of a strong electron withdrawing group. So this compound here will not undergo a nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Remember those three rules, those are really important. It can, however, undergo an elimination addition product if you use pretty extreme conditions. Okay, so let's talk about what that is real quick. Um, so notice that here, you know, again, if I just use a little bit of, or some sodium hydroxide and some heat, I don't get any reaction. If I, if I use a lot of heat, right, 350 degrees Celsius is incredibly hot, then I can get a, such a substitution reaction to occur, but it's going to proceed through a different mechanism. And we'll talk about what that mechanism is real quick, but let me just show. Um, if we use an even stronger reagent, right? So sodium amide is a really strong nucleophile. Turns out that you can do this at room temperatures and you will still get that substitution reaction. However, it turns out that this does not go through the same process, the same uh, mechanism as with the nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Again, it's gonna go through this elimination addition. Let's just sort of talk about the experimental evidence for this real quick. Um, this is how we know that it's not just a simple substitution reaction, right? So if I talk, if I start out with um, four chlorotoluene and I treat it with the sodium amide, notice that not only do I have substitution on that position where the chlorine was, but I also have it on this next door neighbor carbon as well. Okay, so there's not just a simple substitution that's going on here. Uh, further evidence they used just to sort of make sure that it wasn't that methyl group of the toluene that was doing anything crazy is they took a deuterate or not deuterated, I guess it would be a, an isotopically labeled chlorobenzene, where in this case, this star means that this carbon right here is actually carbon 13. Right. So isotopic labeling is sort of used as just a marker so I can tell where uh, my product's going to go. And what they found is that they got aniline at the end like they expected, but they had a 50-50, a perfect distribution where the aniline or the amino group was added to the um, isotopically labeled carbon, but also located right next door. Okay, so that is where this now elimination addition 
type reaction mechanism comes into play, where really what they ha think happens is first an elimination reaction, where you have your strong base grabbing a hydrogen. This pair of electrons then comes down. And then, well, actually, I mean, that's kind of a, a roundabout way of doing it here. If I'm gonna simplify this mechanism, I don't know why they're gonna do it in two steps. Let's just do it in one. We have an elimination reaction where this hydrogen is being received by our strong base. That pair of electrons is coming down to form a new pi bond and kicking off the leaving group, right? And so what we have is this benzyme structure here where we have now a triple bond that's formed between these two carbons. That's something that's very weird, right? Um, I mean, triple bonds like to be linear, not kinked into a um, into a six-membered ring like this. So this is going to be not the most terribly stable intermediate, but there's a lot of evidence for the fact that this intermediate actually is what's coming into play here. Okay, so now what's gonna happen is I have my elimination steps done, I formed my benzyne intermediate, and now I'm gonna have the follow-up addition reaction that happens, but I could have it to either carbon, right? So at this point, this, this uh, triple bond is symmetrical. There's no preference for one side or the other. So 50% of the time, I'll have my nucleophile coming and attacking, my, in this case, the isotopically labeled carbon. Um, notice that you then have to protonate that remaining carbon. So that's what the ammonia in solution is doing, or your, your ammonia solvent is doing for you. It's going to receive a carbon from that. But I could also have where my nucleophile attacks the other carbon. There's no, again, it's a symmetric bond. There's no preference for one carbon over the other. And so that is how I get my 50-50 distribution. So this is this elimination mechanism, the elimination which forms your benzyme, your super weird ring and then followed by an addition, which is not regioselective at all. So it's gonna to happen to both, put, uh, both possible carbons. Okay, um, yeah, so just to sort of walk through these mechanisms again, first is this elimination step that happens right here where we have proton transfer or the removal of that hydrogen and then we have our leaving group being kicked off, forming our benzyne intermediate. So that's the elimination portion of the mechanism. And then we have an addition portion of the mechanism corresponding to these steps here, where we have now nucleophilic attack it can happen to either carbon. In this case, there's no isotopic label, so my product will be the same either way followed by a proton transfer where I have to protonate that uh, carbon that doesn't have a fourth bond there. Okay, um, so these are the elimination addition reactions. Just real quick, this isn't, Diels alder isn't a particular reaction we're gonna look at for these, but this is just one of the most compelling pieces of evidence that that benzyne intermediate does, react, does exist is because if during this reaction, you titrate in a little bit of furon, you actually get a minor amount of your Diels alder product, suggesting that there was indeed a triple bond there. Okay. Um, so now we've talked about sort of two different, sort of just like real quick, taking a step back and reviewing what we did. A lot of the first part of the chapter was spent on these electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. So how do we know what the mechanism is going to be, right? So first of all, you have to look at your reagent. Are you talking about an electrophile or a nucleophile? And let me just real quick, if we are going to go back to our master cheat sheet here, notice that all of these groups here for our strong activators are also going to be good nucleophiles, right? Whereas if we go down all of these groups here, actually, and even our alkyl groups for the Friedel Craft reactions, all of these groups here are instead, we actually don't know how to make that one, good, um, well, 
that one we make, but in a two-step reaction. All of these ones we also know how to make, and those are going to be made through electrophilic aromatic substitution, right? So here we have, in terms of mechanisms, to form our deactivators for the most part, I guess also our weak activators as well, would be the electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. But for our strong activators, those would be formed through nucleophilic aromatic substitutions. Okay, so just sort of make note on our grand cheat sheet here. Um, so again, the, you're going to look at your reagent. Do you have an electrophile or a nucleophile? If you have an electrophile, you can be confident that it's going to be a, an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. If it's a nucleophile, we actually learned about two different ones, and that is um, the nucleophilic aromatic substitution reactions, right? So this was abbreviated EAS, and this was, I don't know why they do the S on these, but yeah, sure. Um, the nucleophilic aromatic substitution reactions, remember for those to happen, you have to have those three criteria satisfied. You have to have the strong withdrawer, you have to have a good leaving group, and that leaving group has to be positioned in the ortho or para position. If that's not going to be the case, then you can have the elimination addition, okay, which is that weird benzyne intermediate. 